Well, that's amazing. And, and one thing you kind of alluded to before was, you know, the infamous, uh, you know, fight with the Bulldogs and how, you know, Hogan was kind of on your side and a lot of guys were on your side. But, you know, was it basically just Dynamite, not really the Bulldogs per se? Was it just Dynamite was kind of a bully and, you know, you were kind of just, uh, you know, teaching the bully a little bit of a lesson? I, I, you know, to, to be honest with you, I, 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 I'm not too keen on bragging about that event in my life because, to be honest with you, uh, the Bulldogs, first of all, I must tell you, before that happened, I had the, I, I was a fan of the Bulldogs. I, I, uh, they were great for the business. They were, they were awesome. The people enjoyed them, and they were, they were what a team. It was an amazing team. And, uh, and, and, uh, I think where it all started with was where Vince uh, put us together against the Bulldogs in Madison Square Garden. And when we got together, all four of us, uh, the Rouge was against uh, when we were still babyface against the Bulldogs. Uh, Vince asked us to do a 20-minute draw. <laughs> and the Bulldogs were offended because they didn't beat us. And so I think a little heat started there, and we had a great match, a hell of a match. And uh, and from then on, you know, uh, uh, the ribs came in, and they started, Dynamite started uh, to rib me and cut my pants and things like that. And But it was a hard time in my life, and uh, and I just uh, I couldn't accept the, the fact that uh, the, 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 Rougeau, the Rougeaus were... Uh, were laughed at like that. It was the dignity of my family. It was uh, I was older than them in the business. I had more notoriety and seniority, and uh, so so I, I didn't want to play the role of McFly in Back to the Future. Also, it was like it's not the place I wanted to be, and, and so I had to do something about it. And and uh, and when they finally found out I was going to do something, talk to Vince. I, I told uh, some guys that I was going to tell Vince that I wasn't going to stand for this. That life was too hard on the road. I didn't. Uh, they came up and they beat me up. And uh, actually, Dynamite Kid beat me up pretty bad. Came in from behind when I was playing cards with Mr. Perfect, and and really gave me the biggest beating of my life. And uh, and after that, then I uh, I had a choice to do, you know, just to take it and then to be uh, to, to to leave the company, or because I hated wrestling after that. I was really in a mental situation where it was problematic for me. And uh, so I did what I had to do. A week later, I made my comeback, and I. Uh, I did what I had to do, and it wasn't a fun time in my life. It's not something that I'm, I think I'm a hero. To be honest with you, I was just desperate. I, I, I loved wrestling. It was the only thing I knew how to do. It was the only thing I lived to do. It was my only passion, wrestling. I'd worked my whole life to get where I was at, and, and, and I didn't want that incident to stop my passion to go. And uh, so, so I did what I had to do. I didn't eat for a week. I didn't sleep for a week. I lost about 10 pounds. Before I did it, I was so afraid to get beat up again. But I did it, and, and I don't know where I got the energy, or where it must have been the, my pride, or something. But I did what it, I did it, and uh, and from then on, it was like uh, uh, I guess it's from there today that I give all those conferences in these schools about intimidation and stuff like that. I think that that's where it comes from. People ask me sometimes, why do you do that? I spend uh, 25 days out of the year giving conferences to to help the kids. I, I think somewhere. Uh, Life was so miserable and hard for me that I, uh, I tried to, to give them tricks to kids. Now I found ways of stopping intimidation in school, and then it works. And and so I, I get some satisfaction. And uh, and over the 10 years that I've done that in schools, I had uh, I had two fathers uh, come to meet me in person. To, one actually told me that I, uh, that I saved his daughter uh, because she had been sitting at the table for the last six months talking about suicide at least three times in the last six months. She was always unhappy and everything. And the day that I went to her school and then, and things changed. She she started taking the bus to go home and she started laughing. And her father kept asking, well, how come you're so happy? And then and then she just told him, well, the girls that were coming to my, my lockers and doing the intimidation, they're not doing it anymore. And uh, ever since Jacques came to the school, it changed. And and so she started having fun again in life. And she the father came and told me word for word. He said, Jacques, he says, actually he said, Mr. Rougeau, he says, You've always been a hero for me, a, a wrestling hero. But he says now you're 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 a hero in life for me, and he and he explained that to me. And, and so I've been doing that for ten years, and and I know I've helped a couple of kids, and that I know of. And who knows, maybe I helped a few others too that I don't know of. But but I know that what I'm doing is 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 very popular in the schools, and and I can't uh, I can't do all the schools that want me to do it now because I'm doing it for free. I'm giving my time, and it's of paying the hotels and the food and the gas and the, but but I do 25 of them a year approximately and uh, and I have a great satisfaction of giving back to society and knowing that I'm I could help a few kids uh, 
don't that don't have to go through what I did for a whole week, the, the most miserable life a week of my life. And so, so, so I guess that's where it comes from. But, uh, but altogether, and all in all, when I look at that, uh, if I take all my feelings aside and I look at what happened and push that aside, the British Bulldogs will be a hero for me all the time. As far as wrestlers, they were amazing. They were they were one of a kind. They were new. They were a new era. And uh, and, and uh, I even as the Mountie when when after that when I came back wrestling after I quit with my brother Raymond, uh, Davy Boy Smith came back to the business alone. And I was wrestling, uh, you see matches on YouTube of uh, me and Davey Boy Smith. And the first day that he came back, he came back the first day he came in was a Philadelphia arena. And he walked in the dressing room and he came up to me and he says, can I speak to you in the shower? <laughs> and I'd heard that he was coming back anyway. So uh, when he said that to me, I said to myself, oh, no, here we go again. And, uh, and, and and when we got in the shower, he told me, he says, Jacques, he says, I just want to let you know. He says, um, what what Dynamite did was wrong. And he says, I don't want to have any fuse with you whatsoever. I'd like it to be bygone, and and, and I'd like for us to, to to be able to work together and stuff. And, and he didn't know how happy I was when he told me that, but but uh, so we never had a problem after that. And I worked with him for the Intercontinental Title, and it was it was wonderful. We had great matches, me and Davy Boy. It, it, 